when I was younger, I did a ton of psychedelics. Um, did everything. When I was older, I did. Go ahead. Uh, well, I, you know, everybody comes to it at a different yeah. place. I had that same realization. You, that I, I just did a little... it younger and I did LS, I did it as a party younger and I oh. did it as a, mm. as a real thing as a as in my 40s yeah like uh, in in an effort to explore yourself yeah <sighs> i just wanted to be in a better mood really uh, and, and lsd was uh, what you not chose? lsd uh oh. ayahuasca and oh. mushrooms oh yeah well that's a good man that's a great i did you have I'm, a i, I did you have talk, like a, i talk about ayahuasca so much so much okay. it's nauseating at this point i understand well you know those um types of revelations i sought out when i was really young how so, young uh, 16 is the first time I did ask. Why? What, uh, what consciously you were like, I, I want to grow up. this knowledge. Yeah. Well, it wasn't, I want to grow up as much as I had done so much reading. I read like crazy when I was a kid. And so a lot of anecdotal stories about, um, LSD. I read, uh, you know, the Mary Prankster's mm -hmm. story, like uh, Ken Kesey, um, the electric Kool-Aid acid test. Like I was just curious about that. And then there was a point where I wanted to do a school report on, were you going to homeschool? What were you doing? I uh, I, I graduated from a, a, a public school in Philadelphia, but I had a lot of remote education with social workers and uh, studio teachers when I mm -hmm. was on uh, site. But they let me maintain a regular curriculum with my classes so that I could at least stay current. Yeah. Um, and I wrote a report <laughs> about the government's unredacted experiments with LSD in the 60s. So I was real curious about the fact that it's just, interesting how many people come to the same conclusion about what is consciousness and what is our access mm -hmm. to it and how do you separate yourself from all of these stimulus and all of these um creative or, or cultural overlays of like how you are what your parents give you in your dna separated from like what you can be what you can feel what mm -hmm. you can emote what you can um i don't know relate to and I, the, at a period of time when I was doing a ton of theological study, I was just curious, like, what are the unifying factors for religions? What is it that everyone's really trying to get at? It's that same place of consciousness, that stillness, the connectivity to everything. everything yeah. Right. And so acid seemed to shortcut you into that consciousness. It, it, makes you keenly aware of the idea that well cause it doesn't i'm I'm, I'm gonna object to sh uh shortcut you did it at a it, party no, no, no. though it's so the, you're no, no, i'm saying the... it's the only cut oh interesting. i'm saying interesting. i'm saying it's not like there's much of another way to get there i to me well, have you ever meditation, it's meditation yeah, yeah meditation but serious meditation yeah meditation heat hatha yoga it's the kind of stuff that is like you you breathe. I mean, it's probably what people were doing at Stonehenge is putting themselves into some kind of altered state so that they can feel the divinity of unified consciousness. Totally agree. Right. So I, but even that, those, I guess they're all shortcuts, but I don't know. So I think there's either that, there's like 10 years or an hour. Well, you know. In a good way. I don't, I don't think they're shortcuts. Here's what point. I say. Oh, I, I appreciate that. The distinction of the classification. Yeah, because it sounds like, like lazy or something and it's not. I definitely didn't take it like that. Yeah. I, I, you know, I come from video game culture where secret doors are secret doors where your, you know, equipment inside this treasure chest, you, you're going to take it. So right. you, you don't, um, issue your potential upgrades just because you got there quicker than somebody else. Just because you went, you got that book. Yeah. They used to be in books. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so with acid, I was really curious about that and I took it in earnest, not at like a party, but with like a, here's my goal. Here is what I want to explore. Here's where I'm trying to review. And I kept notes. Like I was time, I'm taking my pulse. Like how do I feel? I'm 30 minutes in. What do I, you know, I was really so it sounds like you maybe because of the acting, you didn't have a ton of friends. <laughs> and I don't say that as <laughs> no, like, they're, they're, I mean, it, it sounds true. like a yeah. young, it sounds very like challenging you had your to. own yeah. thing and you probably didn't, I mean, you're hanging out with adults a lot yeah. and you probably just did, like the kids your age weren't doing it for you or they thought you were weird or it you I had found your a own... lot of my people when I moved to LA and was yeah. amongst other performers yeah. that were trying to make a living at performing. Yeah. Like and as soon as I really committed to joining the circus, it was welcoming and, and accessible to me. But you have to do the fucking work. That's the point. There is no 
it's that great the meme you know what's the secret and then you open up it's like work hard yeah <laughs> that's it so disappointing it is but it's the truth and when you when you accept that you know what i mean when you really accept that hey none of this is going to come i think about that with the industry all the time people think that talent is enough to drive you permanently you have to constantly be evolving and getting better and improving and demonstrating why yeah. you're here yeah. yes there is no just showing up that may all right we were talking about your your emotional hygiene in your yeah. relationship so so you do that you do the acid as a kid <laughs> i did it but there was a period of time where i was like hard investigating and and disciplined about it to do it on the weekends so i would work at a committed level on whatever i was doing like very intentionally and then uh, on the TV weekends, shows or movies or whatever, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And then, and then on the weekend, I in a very controlled environment, do this kind of experimentation. Okay, but you mention it in regards to your emotional hygiene with your yeah. wife. Yeah, well, in every capacity, like, because the, there's things that you see under that influence that the, your your ability to God's eye your own, it, it, your identity, your your ego, your id, to, to like really separate from those and say, what is holding me back? What am I presenting with? You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. That, that but, stuff. So I got there at a, as a teenager and used all those tools to continue to build on that. And it's not, that wasn't like an instant right, win. Right, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm saying. I'm almost Right. So I've had, so I've had consistent. I'm going to bleep it. Anytime we talk about our anybody, I bleep <laughs> age. Uh, and, well, why? Because it's hilarious. Because it's, funny. A, because it's disgusting funny. how old we are. It's a crime. Ah. We're kids. Don't you get it? <laughs> well, that is kind of the revelation, right? Is that everybody feels nobody like, feels a, age, like yeah. a teenager so until let's, they, let's until they die. Um, You're like, what the fuck? But My what I was going to say, no, I, that's what I, I don't like when people our age, you see them. I remember when you were like the kid in radio days. Sure. And then I see you growing up and I'm like, wait, I'm not fucking. But thankfully, <laughs> you still you still strike me as like a teenager. Mm. <laughs> I mean that in a positive way. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like I, I will never see you as what someone who's never seen you before <laughs> will see you. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder. Definitely they didn't see you on that. the fucking can't hardly wait post. You know what I mean? Like, are you wearing a head? <laughs> you're wearing a goggles. Is that you? Well, I've definitely got the swim goggles. Okay. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, so you get some enlightenment, but then you spend... 15 years dating the wrong kind of girl. Sure. Yeah, but that's a different kind of burden, can you right? Square like you, it? Yeah, I can. I uh I you you always emulate what you've witnessed. And so there was a disposability to relationships. Um and then there was also this assumption that being married meant screaming at the top of your lungs at each other. Oh, right. Right. So I come out into the dating world and I'm convinced that what I especially when I hit LA and everybody's like, yo, you got to play games, dude. You got to like mental hijinks, these women. You got to like trick these girls into thinking you don't like them. You got to treat them like shit, all this stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh, all right. Is that the way to get laid? Like, okay, I'll do my best. It took me a really long time to realize that I didn't need to do any of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to tell you the truth, the drugs helped. <laughs> it was like, why are you... The drugs that, but so this is your drug. You you continue to do hallucinogenics, yeah, for throughout your twenties. No, no. I I mean, the last time I did anything in earnest, I was like maybe twenty. Okay, all right. Yeah. So what I'm but from just like talking about after 20, twenty, the people I did you dated, a ton of exploration. Got that it. was kind of the point of it. I guess I'm just. It's. I guess what I'm saying. It's hard. It's hard to get everything right. One hundred percent. I didn't do ayahuasca until uh, just about maybe eight or nine years ago. And right. I, it was not like I was saving it, but I knew it's a very different type of exploration. So like I've done things like DMT and mescaline and all of those other like, I mean, DMT is the shortest shortcut. Straight, DMT, guys. Straight to- Did you do Bufo? Bufo? Alvarius, the toad venom one? No, I haven't toad done that. The secretion one? That's no, when I, I did that. that. Oh. If you watch blocks on Netflix, the the- my experience is yeah. so it was so fucking insane i did uh five meo dmt like bufo alvarius it's like the nuclear bomb of psychedelics and i think i went too far 
I remember you talking about that. It was so fucking crazy. It broke me for what I thought was about nine months. It turns out it had, I just closed it like eight weeks ago. No shit. Yeah, after a year and a half. But And w- what was it? Just like the trauma uh, of the I visions? was, I, no, it had nothing to do with my anything on earth. It was, Something I chemical? went to, well, no, I just went to what Michael Pollan described as before the Big Bang. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's great for people to go there, <laughs> but no. I'm better off. If you're able to reconcile it. I, yes, but yeah. there were a couple of days there where it wasn't, we weren't going to go on. So I hear you, it man. was insane. It yeah. was insane. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah. Did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green